Hi, everybody. How are you doing? Good. I've had a wonderful time so far at the show. I've learned a lot, and I've learned that we're pretty much in the same business of creating experiences for the people at our shows. A really good experience, in my opinion, is one that delights the customers, or in your case, the attendee, the participant, the showgoer. It's also got to engage the employees. That would be your exhibitors. And it has to make money for the business. That's what you guys are here for. So really good design is just a way of solving problems that lets everybody get a little bit more of what they want. So today, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about a new tool that you can use. And whether you make a journey map or not doesn't really matter. But the cool thing about it for the change that you guys are facing right now is that a journey map is an amazing frame to have a conversation. I've spoken with a few of you, and I've heard that some of your show owners and boards of directors are like stick in the muds. They just like won't budge. You need a tractor, and they still won't budge. A journey map, as you'll find out in our interactive session in a few minutes, is a really clever way to let people start to get their arms around an idea, start to adopt it, start to see that it's even possible, and then figure out how to make it real. So we're going to go over some definitions that you guys can read, blah, 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 blah. All right. Hopefully there'll be time for Q&A. I've done a bunch of stuff, and I've worked with a bunch of people. And this is a picture of the London Tube. Is this a journey map? Kind of. OK. You find out when you actually go to London that the little dots are ne not necessarily the way they appear on the map. It's like your rear view mirror. Objects may be closer than they appear. That is not to scale. I found that out firsthand. It's an idea of where you can go. But it's missing some information. Here's a very clever journey map conceptual level from Lego. And you'll notice that they break their customer experience into three parts. There's the in-store part, the online part, and the out-of-store part, which can be at the movies, at home, a bunch of different things. So they've got hundreds of people working in marketing, communications, product development. And that's how they kind of see where the lines connect. How, how do they connect the dots there? But a journey map needs to do three things to be successful for you. It needs to show you where your customers are, what they're doing, and how they're feeling. How do you represent feelings on a map? If we go back to the London Tube map, there are no feelings there. The Lego map, there are no feelings there. How do you introduce emotions into a graphic? Any ideas? This is a real question. You would lose at an auction because you would have just bought the painting there. Okay. <laughs> I'll give you some examples. This is a journey map, and it has one way to show emotions, which is the line that goes through the middle. The top part over here has a description of the activity that's going on. Like It could be like attendee enters trade show. This one happens to be for a retail purchase. The little graphics, the pictures, just kind of show the motions of the customer and what's going on. It's just there for visual reference. Everybody learns differently, so it's nice to be able to reach people with text, with some pictures, with some other kinds of information. The curvy thing that looks like a flat lining EKG kind of shows how their emotions are doing. Are they excited, elated, are they positive, or are they negative? You've all had net promoter scores before. How likely are you to recommend us? This is similar. It lets everybody see what the intent of the experience is. Where are we going to put our eggs? You know, what basket do they go in? Where is it going to be a great part of the experience so everybody can orchestrate and make that part really good? This is another way to do a customer experience design. It's using storyboards. You can see that each group of images is one stage in the experience. And there's not very much different information here than there was in the graphic before. The difference is, however, that the way you relate to pictures and storyboards and people is through emotions and through story. So as we take a look at it, we'll look at another one in just a second. Uh, as you look at those pictures, you'll be able to start to feel what it's like to be the other person. So when you, in your mind, walk through what the experience is like for an attendee, for an exhibitor, et cetera, you're able to talk about things in a very different way. And again, a journey map is just a frame for a conversation about the future experience that you're going to offer. Journey maps are used in all these different industries with tremendous success. I've used them hundreds of times with clients, and they really are the foundation for breakthrough conversations, great changes in revenue. I'll show you some case studies in a minute. 
So there are five things, and again, you guys can read very well. The journey map is what you use when you're getting ready to differentiate your event. If you're having that tough conversation with one of your show owners or your boards of directors, how are we going to be different? How are we going to be better? Journey map is great for that. If you're looking for ways to engage with your audience more, and pay attention here because this is what I'm going to ask you guys to do in the workshop portion in just a few minutes, how do you create more engagement? A journey map's a great way to do that because it shows where you are, what you're doing, and how you feel. And if you've got a number of heads around the table that are smart about operations and planning and marketing and communications and food and beverage, they can all look at that storyboard and start to see what they need to do so they can create the intended experience rather than just letting the experience happen to the attendees. That's the big difference. When you focus on what your attendees need most, and we heard about that from Brian in the first session, we heard about that from Tony, they get happier because they like when you give them more of what they want. Design thinking, which is what journey maps are based on, is really cool. And the one really cool thing about it, because it's a problem solving tool, is that it gives everyone more of what they want. So journey maps are a breakthrough tool because you don't have to like take a little bit from here to get a little bit here. It's not like big, it was a steal from Peter to pay Paul. Everybody can get more if you just change the design or the frame. So here are a couple of examples for you of where journey maps have had some really big thinking breakthroughs, some economic breakthroughs. None of them have to do with trade show. You guys are going to do that one next. So let's take a look first at restaurants. If it's for me, tell them I'm busy. <laughs> so in 1999, McDonald's was doing their Restaurant of the Future project, and I was working at IBM as their e-visionary and had a chance to play in this. It was a very, very fun space. So it must have felt like being Tony and getting to uh, design a new show. So here are a couple of women standing or sitting at work, dreaming about lunch, starting to talk about it. They get in the car. One of them asks the other, how do you do this? Notice she's not texting while driving. That's important. Couple of details that we put in the picture here. I'm going to step off the stage here and get into a little detail. If you'll notice, the screen that's in the top left looks exactly like the screen that's on the, um, in the girl's hand. So the receiver of the order has exactly the same screen. And the person at the call center, you can't see the detail, but they're dealing with exactly the same graphics. So if you have special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun, you see those ingredients, and so does the customer. So everybody is like on the same page. There's less chance for error. Over here, you're driving over, just like I've got this thing here, you, your, your wheels drive over the, um, you know, hit the curb, and all of a sudden, McDonald's knows that you're on site. Why is that important? Why would they care where you are? Yes, so they can know when to drop the fries and, and when to bag everything up. And if you had this uh, ability to order in advance, would you want to go into the traditional line and just kind of wait in the drive through Wouldn't you want to be first because you ordered ahead? Well, what they did is they created n number of drive throughs So here's one, but next to it is another one, and next to it is another one, and next to it is another one. So basically, they just ping you on your phone, and they say, go to number four go to number six. And the guy walks out, and he brings you your food. And you'll notice that the receipt has exactly the same image on it as your phone order as the screen that lets you verify. And also, the bag is clear. And the clear bag is so that you don't spend time looking through things and keeping the other people behind you from, you know, from getting through. Did you hear how much detail there was in that story? You can't get that in a PowerPoint or a conceptual graphic. You get that when you think about the personas that we just heard about uh, from Rich a second ago, and you put those into stories. So that's how journey maps work. And when you do yours, you're going to have a time to talk about you know, what is the change that we're going to make, where are we going to put it, and what angle are we going to look at it from. But these are one of the advantages. By the way, the McDonald's uh, experiment was so successful that they couldn't deploy it because the estimated rise in sales based on their own econometrics was that they'd have to replace the kitchen and the stores. So much business that they couldn't handle it. So, but it led to some good learnings from them. This next one is for 
an employee welcoming experience for a company called iPay Technologies. iPay, way back in the day, 15 years ago, was one of the first to introduce bill pay services to people who had checking accounts. They specialized in community banks and credit unions. So you're imagining this company is growing at 100% a year, doubling sales, doubling profits, doubling number of employees. And the CEO asked me, Mike, how can we continue to grow comfortably and profitably? Um, I've heard a lot of stories about Shepard and how the leaders of the company take great pains to do the right things at the right time. They don't always go on sales calls. They might spend time training. I just heard that story over here a few minutes ago. They believe the same thing at iPay. They wanted to keep that small company culture as they got really big. So we define the experience of their employee in the very top right in four little blobs. There was pre-hire, first day, first week, and forever. So this is what the first day looks like. And there are five key moments in this experience. The first one is uh, showing up. You get your own little parking place. The second one is walking in, getting greeted by the receptionist, uh, for your city at your desk, and so on. But what's interesting about what we do is we go into a little bit more detail. You'll notice there uh, is Emmett, the little coffee cup-shaped guy. That's what you do when you can't draw. Okay. And there are a bunch of little orange things next to him with numbers on them. These are called clues. Anytime you have an experience, you want the experience to kind of touch people emotionally. Well, the business has to supply clues in order for that to happen. Some of the clues here are these way cool screen signs that are like bright, but don't overpower the, the, uh, the room. They're great signs. We've got the, the Pokin devices. Um, we've got all kinds of uh, people in blue shirts offering to be very helpful. Those are clues that connect with you. Here are some of the clues from Emmett's first day of work. Um, number 24, his business cards are already printed and ready for him. His computer is already up and running and his passwords have been assigned. He has mail waiting for him and his first appointments are on his calendar. I see a couple of you smiling like you've been to places before and not gotten a computer for a few weeks. Okay. <laughs> so thinking about all these little things that need to happen is where a journey map is so powerful. You have all these ideas, like you will in a couple minutes. You put them on the board on sticky notes. You start to arrange them. You figure out which ones you can and can't do, which ones are stretch, which one do you save for version two. It's just like building software. And then you put them all in a picture, and you launch. And that becomes your experience. But because you have it in a picture, other people can get on board with it. One of the things that happened at um, iPay was the savings of $20,000 per executive that they brought on board. And they brought about 15 of them on during the course of this project. All we did was we found out why it was that it took people three weeks to get a computer on their desk. We asked why. Well, we don't want to pay for these things before somebody arrives. Well, why is that? Because it costs money. Well, it doesn't cost that much. You could just lease it. Well, blah, blah, blah. I get dinged on my annual review if I send computers out ahead of when they're absolutely needed. So one person's puny little issue was stopping executives from being productive for three weeks. So all we did was we changed the way the business works. And we let them buy 20 computers at a time, which gave them a cost savings. And they'd warehouse them. They'd get them 90% of the way ready, you know, loading software and stuff like that. When a new employee came in, they made a few little changes. It took them about an hour. Boom, computer's ready. It's on their desk. So we shortened the throughput time, we lowered the cost, and we made the employees more productive. That's design thinking. That's the kind of opportunity that pops out of a journey map. That's what Tony was talking about when we talked about selling less space but making more money and getting more engagement. It's the same thing. All right, one more. Uh, we did a store design for a company called Transitions. Do you guys know Transitions? They make the lenses that change color when it hits UV light. So the same approach, lots of figuring out what's the show floor going to be like, what's the store floor plan going to be like. And here was the idea for the portal. And notice there are some little numbers around it. The little circle on the right-hand side under the word C was a viewport. You've probably been to New York City sometime, and you look through the little cutout to look at the construction, same idea. But it would give you the experience of trying on their glasses without having to go in the store and do one. 
And you'll notice, well, you can't see it here, but the idea was to have a bunch of people standing at the glass going like this, so that behind them, people were looking at the people bent over looking through the glass and going, what are they doing? And then they become the next ones to come up and, and look through the glass. So when you have conversations about what's the journey like, what's the experience like, those are some of the things that can show up. Is this making sense? OK. One of the cool things about um, the last slide, how do we, oh, here, here's the back button. See where it says number one, the archway, which is kind of suspended, it's a really cool architectural feature. It's, it uses a Philips hue lighting, so it can change color. And the idea is that when something inside the store happens, the color changes. So it can be red or blue or green or anything else. So it's a signal to the employees that something's going on. It's also an attractor for the folks from the outside. All right, the level of detail I'm sharing right now is boring the heck out of some of you. Like, why are you telling me this? The point is that when you use pictures and you put the little notes up there for clues, you can get very deep into way, the way things will actually work. And that's the conversation that gets people to say yes or to switch from digging in their heels and being defensive to, hmm, let me tell you how I would do that. All of a sudden, the conversation moves in a different direction, and it's all about how to get something to happen. So you take the I am off of impossible, and things can become a little bit more possible. All right, this one had software in it, all kinds of cool displays and whatnot. This is one of my favorite uh, journey maps ever. And I don't know if I push this button, what's gonna happen, but let's find out if the video plays. It didn't play. Can a smarter person than me make the video go, please? Yeah, Chris, Chris will get it. Thanks. This is from a company called Corning, and Corning basic, basically turns sand into glass but now they've turned glass into interactive touch points that can be part of almost any kind of interaction. Take a look and see how much you believe about these. Bath show, auto show, eat your heart out. <laughs> now I want you to pay attention to something. While you're being wowed by the graphics, they're very high fidelity, they're believable. Why are they believable? See if you can figure that out. Okay, have you figured it out? Why is everything so believable in this montage? Shout out real loudly, please. And what makes it real? Real people, really nicely done special effects. Watch this next one here. The expressions on the girls' faces, that's what makes it real. How people react to an idea is one of the secrets of how all of us decide whether we're going to believe in that idea or not which is why storyboards combined with journey maps are so powerful. You can give people a picture of how people are going to respond. Does that make sense? Okay, ladies, I have a friend named Ed. I grew up with him in Orlando, and his company, or his family, owned a wedding dress store. And he told me this story, um, which is basically when a girl goes, on, goes into the store to get a wedding dress, she brings a friend. And there's usually a sofa, okay? So if you'll be my, uh, my, my best friend, my best girlfriend, okay? So I've got this dress on, and I'll kind of go like this. But <laughs> the first thing I do with my eyes is not look in the mirror. I look in your eyes because you're going to tell me... The real thing. <laughs> Bingo. Proof made. Okay, guys, you won't get that, but girls, you, we, got, we got it. <laughs> all right. So what we're going to do now is an exercise. This is all about... <laughs> I got to hear that later. <laughs> All that working out in the gym, come on. <laughs> okay, you guys want to give this a try? All right, so uh, we're here with Shepard. We're talking about floor plans, uh, economic change, all kinds of new technology, better engagement and interactions. So there are four boards in the back, 
and there are, there's one board on either side up here. Tony's going to be your guide up here. Richard's going to take a couple in the back, and I'll take a couple in the back. And what I'd like you to do is think about, and we're together going to think about an idea for improving engagement. We're going to pick one, and we're all going to work on it at the same time. Each of these different boards has a uh, clear piece of, oh, has a, did you want to say something? No, I'm just. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, right. You have assistance. Okay, great. Um, in the background is a floor plan for McCormick. It's the, what was it called, all in? The 10 by 10s everywhere, what is that called? It's a max layout. Max layout. I'm learning all kinds of things today. Yeah. <laughs> you can use that term if you like. All right. So max layout, it's the old way of kind of doing the Caterpillar video game. You have to go all the way through, up and down. It's, it's like loaded as much as possible to maximize the value of the real estate. Your job is to maximize the value of the engagement and create a better experience, maybe even something that's destination worthy or communication worthy that people are going to want to come back to your show for. If you've got a declining show, or you've just merged one, you need something new, how are you going to do that? So first, we're going to come up with a couple of ideas. Then you're going to break into groups. Are you guys old enough to figure out how to do that yourself? All right, you guys do that yourself, because I have, not, have no idea how to tell you to do that. So go with friends, whatever. There are six boards. On the bottom of each board, there is a little word. It can say operations, technology, or engagement. If you choose to, you can tackle this issue from that one point of view. The cool thing about journey maps and the experiment that we're doing and the l lesson that I would like you to learn is that you can use one journey map and one floor plan to look at all different parts of your organization. Each one of these clear sheets is like an extra perspective. So let's say we come up with an idea to improve engagement that includes um, having Where's Waldo show up, okay? Not so great an idea. I hope you don't pick that one. So Where's Waldo was wandering around in his red and white shirt, and we show him on the floor plan. So there's, there's Where's Waldo. Well, what does it take to get where Waldo there? Well, operationally, you need to hire somebody who looks like Waldo and has very black hair and has a red and white shirt and has goofy shoes. And there have to be enough of them, you know, that look enough alike that you can populate your whole show. That's the operation side, okay? What about the communication side? Well, you want to have Waldo peek his head out maybe in one of the invitations or show up in an email or maybe there's a life-size cutout of him somewhere or maybe there's a prize that goes with Waldo. You see all the different things going on? So on each one of the different layers, you can add all the detail that it takes to make the idea work. And this is what I'd like you to really focus on. Once we come up with the idea, each of you needs to check in with the others to make sure that the conversation stays focused on how to make things work by using different points of view, not cutting it down. The trick is to build the idea up and find out how to make it go and then, of course, you have to find out if it really can. Sometimes it can't, but other ideas can come from it. Does that all make sense? All right. What are some ideas for improving engagement? What do you think? We've got a microphone here. That's wonderful. Let's have another idea. <laughs> An activity zone, OK? Somebody build on that. Make it more specific. So we want to have like a demonstration area. Anybody else? Another idea or build on that one? Okay. Cool. Yeah, kind of like a soapbox that they used to use. You stand up and. A genius bar, okay. Another a genius bar, cool. So when you when you work on these, when you you put in the genius bar or you put in uh, the interactive area, maybe it's multi-purpose interactive area and it does all the things that we've talked about. What do you have to change? You have to change your floor plan. That changes your economics. It changes the way you sell. It changes your app. You've got to get new graphics for that. You've got to teach people how to use that space better. All those different things make sense. All right, so let's go around. Uh, we've got, um, we have 20 minutes left until mm, lunchtime. So let's spend about 10 minutes figuring this out. 
you've got two layers to work on. You can draw on the back layer, which is uh, paper, and then you can put your ideas on the clear acetate. I think we have permanent markers. We have permanent markers, so and we also have post-its. And post-its. So if you're sure about your idea, use permanent markers. If you're not, use a post-it, all right? So we'll do this for about 10 minutes, and then we're going to do a little bit of walking around, okay? If you have any questions, raise your hand, and maybe somebody will show up and help you. All right. So here we go. All right, so what was, your, uh, what was your core idea, and what did you call your core idea? Um, I don't know what we called the core idea. The core idea was to move away from traditional trade show um, straight up down aisles and have more of a wheel and spoke kind of a um, feel, and then create it more like a city environment. Okay. Now, the, the purpose of this experiment, this uh, workshop, is not so much to figure out the best trade show design. You've got Shepard and Tony and a bunch of you that know how to do this. So let's not argue those points. I'm going to ask you some questions about how you got to this. And I'd like for all of you to just file some of those away so that you can use them yourself. At what point did the conversation switch from should we do that to how do we do that? How did you get that to happen? I think when Penn hit the paper. I mean, we started talking about it and someone said, well, what if we do something here? And then once we, once we drew this circle in the middle, Mm -hmm. Then everything started flowing out. Cool. Did you put all the ideas on, or did some of the bad ones fall off and not make it to paper? Yeah, some of the bad, some of the ones that people were like, oh, maybe this, maybe that, that never made it to. What was your name? Ellen. Ellen drawing it on the uh, on the floor plan. Okay. She was our artist. Okay. <laughs> and how do you guys think that people who shout out an idea and it doesn't make it onto the board, how does that make them feel? <laughs> Aww. <laughs> And maybe that idea is the spark that you need in two hours to really get something to work. You never know at what stage an idea is. So to get the best participation possible, you want to jot everything up. Like all this space over here, they used white ink. You can't see all the other ideas here. Yeah. So you just list everything, and then you kind of move them over here. Something else you can do is have a bunch of these sheets and post them around the room and put another one down and try another idea and keep going. You can, um, as we go to the next ones, we'll talk about some more. Anything else you care to share about this one? No. Great. Good job, guys. Tell us, um, the, what's go. the idea? What's it called? Um, well, we actually, I actually, we actually did this at an event we just had. And we kind of already went Cheated. through. No, not really. <laughs> well, we actually did the same thing with our office. And mm -hmm. we actually, we had been doing the same thing over and over again for nine years. And the team got together and said, we need to do something different. So we started basically with the downtown concept mm -hmm. in the center where we would have the company information there and how do we feed off on the, in the healthcare industry because we're in healthcare. How do we get our attendees to go to the different areas because we segmented all the areas. So we would have, we put up, a, we put up pavilions. We've got like pharmacy, lab, you know, construction, um, food and beverage, medical, med surge mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff and then so to keep the show flowing and to keep us in the middle, to keep our company in the middle, which is Can I interrupt you for a second? You can interrupt me all you all right. What do you guys think of that description? Pretty clear. Who's the center of the story? The company. The company. I know. Well. How would you say that where the consumer, where the attendee, the... Well, um, we're giving them the feel. We're giving the attendee the feel on where they need to go mm -hmm. and how they need to move around the exhibit floor to their benefit and making it easier for them to get around the show okay. floor. Now, tell it to me like I'm a potential participant. Oh, yeah, the yellow dots, the yellow dots. So if we, if, if you're a pharmacy attendee and we put a yellow dot on your name badge and then you fought, we're going to have put... Um, decals on the floor so they follow the yellow dots around the exhibit floor mm -hmm. to be able to which exhibitors would benefit to them got to it be able to talk to right. them. you hear the language there it's a little bit more customer centric yeah okay 
Here's even more customer centric. Oh, this show is going to be so much easier to navigate than the last year. Much All you have to do is follow the yellow brick road. It's just like Dorothy. Follow the yellow brick road. <laughs> okay. See, I, I told that to somebody, and modeling that kind of language makes it a lot more fun. It lets the communications people get involved sooner. The operations can come later. Who cares if it's a yellow brick road or yellow dots? It doesn't matter yet. The idea is to get the flow. Later, or in a separate story, you would talk about the benefit to the show organizer. First the attendee, then the exhibitor. So this is going to create continual flow. So the conversation with the exhibitors is you're going to have to have somebody fresh and on the whole time. You're not going to have the normal 2 o'clock lull or the 10.30 break. It's going to be moving the whole time. And here's how we're collecting stuff, OK? So just changing the voice from third person to first person it just kind of lifts it up. Do you feel the difference? OK. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, what we did was we were on the engagement uh, side of things. And what we were uh, kind of uh, poised to do or, um, and ponder was how to engage our audience. So, um, and this was both on the attendee side and on the exhibitor side. So what we did was is we moved registration uh, out of the common areas and onto the show floor. And also, those are going to be our wow zones at the same time. So that when the attendee and the exhibitor come onto the show floor in the reg areas, that they're, we're going to hit them with uh, something that we got from on stage and uh, you, know, our, uh, you know, our exhibitors here. Uh, to really knock them out, so something to tweet about, something to talk about, something to bring home uh, to their audience or their coworkers. Rich, did you get a lot of negative ideas about putting things in the middle at the beginning of your conversation? Well, yeah, because uh, I think it's, uh, you know, but with your guidance, you actually helped us a little bit. So by the way, this turned around when he helped us out. Um, and that is, is that once you have an idea, uh, run with it and see what happens. And then that's what we did, so. And what happened to the tone of the, the group? What was the feeling in the group? It actually changed. Um, so it was like, well, okay, well, how do we do this? And what should we do? And, and, and you know, what things would it be? Or what would that look like? Yeah. Do you remember what it was that you said that let people have permission to pursue an idea that they might not have agreed with first? Well, you know, we're all um, type A personalities, so no one is shy <laughs> speaking here. So um, I think pretty much everyone was engaged, don't you think? I, you know, I think we were all contributing. Good. So one of the things that you can say is, you know, we're going we're gonna to review, this is, imagine I'm part of your group, we're going to probably review five or 20 ideas today. Let's just segment off this one and go through it as practice. Let's see how much information we can create around this idea. We might be able to solve this one. It might be a good solution. We might be able to take parts of it and put it into the one of the other ones that we do later. What that does is it gets the right kind of behaviors going when you're doing a journey map conversation, and it starts to eliminate bias. There's a lot of bias when people come to the table. You're all trained. You went to school. You became an engineer, or first you were a nurse, whatever. You have a way of thinking about the world that you will not let go until you die. And that's true of everybody else in your group. So usually people will validate an idea or accept an idea close if it fits the way they're used to thinking. So that's the part that we've got to kind of break down. However, those individual points of view are so valuable because all the attendees and the exhibitors and the boards of directors and the show owners, they also went to school and think a certain way. So as you, as you have these conversations and document everybody's ideas, you learn how to tell your story about the experience, which is what we did two units down. Just change the way you do it, and you'll learn from everybody. So good learning on this one. Thanks very much. Did you have fun with it? Oh, it was fun. Good. All right. We work very carefully on this idea of what it means to be a center of interest, this place where people gather. And, and um, the, the team decided that the hub idea was where we were at. We're going to put it out here in the middle of the floor and then work with spokes off of that to have sub areas of sub-interest. Um, of course, you have to change uh, the way you think about the floor. And, and so. Who said Magic Kingdom? I was not, it was not my idea. But the idea was. Now, you think about Magic Kingdom, you think about different ways. It's about storytelling. It's about engagement. We also looked at the Epcot Center. Um, 
uh, model so that the, everything about the communication about the show floor is personalized engagement, opportunities to engage with uh, exhibitors and, and content creators in new ways so that we can now start, uh, somebody also brought up, where, where is she? The idea that you've developed the selling tool around what's happening on a different hub, different points mm -hmm. of the hub so that you're changing the way the floor works. Okay, let me interrupt for a second. Did you guys notice something about the storytelling on this journey map? We all agreed that. We. The idea, not Joe's idea or Mary's idea or Frank's idea, just the idea was to. And then you said, and this idea spawned that one. Th doesn't that make you feel like, like a lot more attracted to the idea? You take the people out of it. It's not about ownership. It's about contribution. And everybody wants to look good, feel good, feel good and put their, everybody wants to put their thumbprint right on this thing. So if you're the facilitator, give everybody the opportunity. Get those ideas to come out and write something down because then that person starts to open up a little bit. Even the most recalcitrant, heels, high heels dug in, stingiest person in the world will start to loosen up a little bit when they feel like they're being heard. So this is a reflective tool, and it's all about getting the story started about the experience. One last thing before lunch. Does anybody have a quarter or a, a coin? Real quick. Who uses you, you can imagine. All right. So we, we have this thing that has two sides, all right? So this is your story. What's on the other side of it? Here we go. Thanks. What's on the other side? What's on the other side of heads? Tails. What's on the other side of an experience? A story. What's on the other side of a story? An experience. Disney World. Disney said the trick to business, and paraphrased, okay, I grew up in Orlando, so I, Walt, Walt. Walt. He said that the trick to this business is to deliver an experience that's so good that people will want to come back and have it again. Long dash and bring their friends. Here's how it works. If you think about the story that you want to tell other people, who cares? Aren't you interrupted like 8,000 times a day with, um, with advertisements and direct mail and emails? You don't want to hear all that, all that stuff. You want to hear about how something meant something to somebody else. You want to hear about the experience. So if you go have a wonderful experience on a roller coaster and you tell me about it, it's going to be like, oh, it's so awesome, and my feet almost like hit the water, and then this Yeti monster came out, and, and I went backwards on the roller coaster. I've never gone backwards on a roller coaster. You hear the emotion? What does that do inside of you? It makes you never want to go on a roller coaster, or it makes you really want to go. So the emotions that people discover for themselves are the heart of story. You know that from being in theater. It, it's, it, it's all about that. So when you deliver people a great experience, they're going to tell a story about it to their friends. And that's why I like journey maps, because they're a frame for getting the story and the experience right at the same time. You can have a great experience and tell a crappy story about it, and nobody will go. You can have a great story and have a crappy experience, and nobody will come back. You guys are talking long term. Let's make change. Let's show people the way to the future. Let's make them comfortable. You've got to have great alignment between the words that you use and the experience that you deliver so that attendees and exhibitors will be telling you your story in an amazing way. Because the best story is not yours. It's theirs. And now it's lunchtime. Right. <laughs> Good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, thank you.